If you are a web developer or a business owner, then there are various times when you want to host your WordPress website locally on your computer. Maybe you want to test some functionality on your site or maybe you want to avoid a situation of messing up your live website on hosting server or maybe any other reason. But if you want to learn how to host a WordPress website locally on your computer, then this video is for you. My name is Ankit and you're watching Elegant Themes YouTube channel. Let's dive in. If you want to follow along step by step, we have covered everything in form of a blog post. So if you want, you can go ahead and check out the link in the video description below to read the complete blog post. So let me just give you a quick idea about what is local hosting. Now, local hosting is often referred to as local development, which is the process of creating a web server on your computer itself. So basically you recreate the environment that you get on your hosting server on your local computer where you can build, experiment and test websites before making them live on a hosting server, which makes local hosting a great way to test your website design, functionality and performance without the need of live connection. And eventually, once you decide to take your website live, then you need a reliable hosting provider and we have some recommendations for you. Our top recommendation for a reliable host is SiteGround. This is primarily due to the exclusive security features that they offer, including daily backups, free SSL certificate and web application firewall. Along with that, you can also check out WP Engine and Flywheel for their amazing hosting services. We will leave all the details in the video description below. And if you use any of these links below, we might get a little bit of kickback, which helps us create free and helpful content content for you like this one. So what are the requirements for creating this local server on your computer? Well, all you need is just a computer running either Windows, Linux or Mac. Then you need a web server software which will help you create this localized hosting environment. And we also need a web browser to see our website. And along with that, we also need a stable internet connection to push our website onto the live hosting server from our local machine. Now, there are four ways by which we can create this local server on our computer. First option is by using a WAMP server, which will work for Windows. Then we have option number two, that is MAMP which is an excellent choice for Mac users. And then we have local by Flywheel, which works great on both Windows and Mac. And if you are a customer of Flywheel or WP Engine, then this application is no brainer. This application allows you to create as many WordPress website on your local server as you wish. And once you are ready, you can push these local sites from your computer directly onto your Flywheel or WP Engine server. And the next option is by using application like ZAMP. And that's what we are going to cover in this video. So let's see how we can download XAMPP application and use that to create a local environment on our computer. All right, so let's fire up our web browser and in the search box, let's type in XAMPP. And here is the first URL that is apachefriends.org. We need to click on this link and it will take us to the home page of XAMPP. And here we can see options for Windows, Linux and Mac setup. So right now I'm using Windows machine. So I'll be using the Windows setup. So in order to download this, we just need to click on this Windows icon and it's going to take a few seconds and the download should start automatically. And once the download is complete, we can see our setup file here in our download folder. So in order to start the installation process, let's click on this setup. And now we are on the first screen of installation. So we just need to click on next. And here it's going to show us all the components. So we don't have to change anything here and just need to click on next. And here it's showing us the path where the application is going to install. So once again, we are going to click on next. And here we can choose our language. So we'll keep it on English and then click on next. And now we are ready to unpack all the files and begin the installation. So let's click on next. So this is going to take a few seconds to finish up all the backend stuff. So let's wait for a few seconds. All right. So now the installation is done. We can now fire up the control panel of this application. So let's click on finish. And here we have the control panel of XAMPP. And here we can see various services which we can start and stop. So in order to create our hosting environment on this local machine, there are two mandatory services that we need to turn on from here. First is Apache. So let's click on start. And then we also need to turn on MySQL services. So let's click on start that as well. And whenever we are not using the services of this server, we can simply go ahead and stop any of them. So now we have successfully set up the web server software 
it's time to install WordPress on our local machine and then connect that with our local server. So once again, we open up our web browser and search for download WordPress. And here is the first link that we need to click. And this will take us to the download page of WordPress.org because that's the open source version of WordPress, which we need to use, not the WordPress.com. So here on this page, we can see the latest version of WordPress. So let's click on download. And once again, it will start downloading and will be done in just a few seconds. And once the download is complete, we will get this zip file of WordPress setup. So let's go ahead and extract this. So we are going to extract all the files right here. And once we open up our extracted folder, these are all the files that we need to create our WordPress website. And now in order to create our WordPress website, we need to copy all these files and then paste them in a specific folder where we have installed XAMPP local server. So let me just go ahead and copy all these files. And here we will open up the XAMPP installation folder. So this is how the file structure of our XAMPP local server looks like. So don't get overwhelmed with this. We just need to open one specific folder here, which is htdocs. So let's open this. And here we again see a few files and this is the place where we need to paste our WordPress files. Now we are not going to place them directly here. We first create a folder. So I'll click on add new folder and I'll name it as ET demo one. And this name will act as a URL slug for my website as well. I'll show you in a minute how it works. So let's open this folder and then paste all the WordPress files that we have just copied. All right, so now we have all the files here. Once again, whenever we need to create a new site, all we have to do is just go back to our htdocs folder and then create a new folder and paste the WordPress file inside it. And that will act as a fresh copy of WordPress setup. Now, in order to connect these WordPress files or this WordPress setup with our PHP My Admin database, we need to make few changes here. So for that, we need to open up this WP config sample file and you can use any code editor here or even you can use a simple notepad. And this is all the code you will find inside this file. Once again, don't feel overwhelmed with this. I'll try to make it as simple as possible. Now here on the line number 23 of our code, we have an option for database name. So we just need to select this text here. And here we need to enter the name for the database, which you want to create for this particular website. So let's say we give it a simple name like ET demo one. And below that we have an option for database username. So instead of this, we just go ahead and select it and type in root, which is going to be default for every WordPress website you're going to create with XAMPP. And after that, for the database password, we are going to select whatever written here and then remove everything because the password will remain blank in this case. And once again, this is going to remain same for all the WordPress website you are going to set up using XAMPP. All you need to do is just change the database name here and rest of the information will remain the same. So let's go ahead and save our changes. And before we close this file, let's go ahead and copy the database name from here because we will be needing that in the next step. So now let's go ahead and close our code editor. And as you can see, the name of this file is WP config sample. We just need to rename that to WP config.php. So all we are going to do is just remove the word dash sample from here. So once we are done, just need to click on enter and that will be saved. All right. So now the next step is to open the XAMPP control panel and access the PHP my admin so that we can create the database which is required for creating our WordPress website. So we open up our XAMPP control panel once again and we already have our MySQL service running. So let's click on admin from here and this will open up the PHP my admin in our web browser and here we need to create a new database. So for that, we need to click on database from here. And here we have an option for create database. And just below that, we need to enter the database name that you want to create. So here we are going to enter the same database name that we have entered in our WP config file. And this is the most crucial part in order to connect our WordPress files 
with our database and after that we just need to click on create and we now have a blank database we can see the name here in the top breadcrumbs and now in the new tab we are going to open up our wordpress website so for this we again need to type in http colon two time forward slash then localhost and after that we need to type in the url slug for our wordpress website which is our folder name that we have just created where we have copied our wordpress files so in our case it's et demo one so once we enter this url let's hit enter and now we are at the step one of connecting this wordpress website with our database so we'll keep the language as english let's click on continue and here we first need to type in the site title so we can just give any random name here we can change that later on from our WordPress backend. Here we need to enter the username which you want to use to log in in the WordPress backend. And for the security purpose, make sure you enter a strong username and password and make sure you save it somewhere safe. So here I'm just going to enter ET demo one as a username and we'll leave the password as it is. And after that, we have an option for email. So we can enter our email address here. And below that, we have an option for search engine visibility. So we don't have to do anything here because right now we are just working on our local server. So it's anyway not going to work. Now, before we move ahead and click on install WordPress, just a quick reminder, make sure you have copied your username and password in a safe place. And once we are done, we just need to click on install WordPress and it's going to take a few seconds. And here we can see the installation is already done and we can now click on login to visit the WordPress admin login page. And here we just enter our username and password that we have just entered and then click on login and boom, here we are in the back end of our WordPress setup. So we can do anything from here. We can install a new theme, install a new plugin or anything that you can do on a live hosting server. You can now do that on your local machine. So this is how we can set up WordPress on our local machine using a local server software. So if you like this video, then make sure you give it a like and make sure you check out the video description below for all the relevant links that we have used in this video. And make sure you share this video with someone who wish to create a WordPress setup in their local machine. And for more WordPress videos like this, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever we upload our next video. That's it for this one and I'll see you in the next video.